Baker Homestead again. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, I just want to say I noticed today my channel on YouTube, we just hit 3,000 subscribers. I want to thank you guys. High five from Austin here. This channel couldn't couldn't have lasted this long if it wasn't for you guys, and we just want to say we appreciate it. Uh, had John Hardesty asked us another question about, about some rabbit genetics, and uh, I just thought, what the heck, we would just uh, knock them out real quick. Just uh, talking a little bit about rabbit genetics here. What I have here, look at this little guy here. Looks like they've been chewing some fur. See that little spot on his head? Looks like somebody's been pulling some fur out of his head. They do that sometimes when they're when they're little like this. They get at this at this age they're curious. They want to kind of nibble on anything because they're they're starting to learn what makes good food and what doesn't. See, the little rascal, two 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 and a half weeks old. He's tearing he's tearing up that pellet right there. It looks like he's trying to eat part of my carpet there too. Um, anyway, let me get this little guy here. Okay, obviously I hope you can tell in the camera, but this is a black. And this is a chocolate. Now, the other day we talked about otters and the A locus on the rabbit's genotype, okay? Today, we're going to talk about the B locus on the rabbit's genotype. The B locus actually is for color. You, you have for, for, ba for basic color, for basic self colors, you have black and you have chocolate. Black being a dominant and it's denoted by a capital B on the B locus when you're writing out the rabbit's genotype. If the rabbit has the, the, the dominant B gene or the dominant black, the rabbit will be black, okay? It's dominant. If the rabbit has it, it's going, you're going to see black on that rabbit. Now, the chocolate. The chocolate is denoted on the B locus of the genotype by a lowercase b, and it is recessive. It takes two copies of the chocolate or the lowercase b gene. It takes two copies of that to make this rabbit a chocolate. It takes one capital or one capital or, or uppercase B on the or basically the black, which is a dominant gene on the B locus, okay? It takes one dominant B gene or black gene to make this rabbit black. Well it's got two spaces on that on that on that particular locus of the genotype, so what happens to that other space? Well, one of two things can happen. One, either it can have a second dominant B, dominant black gene, which means uh, pretty much it means that rabbit's not ever going to throw anything but black, okay? Or, in that second space, this black rabbit, and this one probably does, is going to carry one lowercase b. So it's going to be capital, on the b locus, it's going to be capital B and lowercase b, okay? So what that means is, is it's a black rabbit, but it carries chocolate carries the recessive gene for chocolate. Now what that means is, is if you take two black rabbits, even though black black is dominant, you take two black rabbits that carry the chocolate gene, and 25% of those rabbits, of those, of those rabbits' babies could be chocolate, even though black is dominant. Now, is that clear as mud? <laughs> uh, the reason it happens is because the rabbit only throws one copy of a gene from each parent to the baby, okay? The baby has two, but the parent, each parent gives it one, okay? So if this rabbit gives it a, a dominant black gene on the B locus to the kit, that rabbit's gonna be black. But what, what if mama throws it the lowercase b? It's gonna carry that lowercase b, so what happens is, is if you had two of them black and they carried chocolate, a portion of the kits are going to be chocolate simply because they don't have to, even though they have the dominant black gene, they don't have to throw that one to their babies. They could throw both of them, both this one and say if you had another one here, if they grew up and had babies, both of them could throw that recessive chocolate gene to a baby and end up with chocolate babies even though both parents are black. So these, this, this is your, these are your two basic colors, black and chocolate. And again, those are found on the B locus of the genotype. All right. So who are the other guys? Well, John asked asked another question. He was he was interested in learning about the dilution gene. Okay. The dilution gene. What is the dilution gene? Well, the dilution gene. We're skipping C. We're we're skipping the C locus, by the way, just for now. On, on the on the rabbit's genotype when you're writing it out. The D gene. 
the DG is what makes the capital D stands for non-dilute. The recessive or lowercase d gene stands for dilute. It takes two copies of the dilution gene to put the put the dilute in effect on that rabbit. Okay? So here's what we're looking at. Here you've got a chocolate bunny. Here you've got a little lilac bunny. And the way we get the lilac bunny is the lilac bunny is simply a chocolate rabbit that has been affected by the dilution gene. In other words, both of her parents gave her the dilution gene, okay? And so instead of being chocolate, she ended up being lilac. Chocolate dilutes down. When it's hit with the dilution gene, it turns into lilac. And if you look real close, you can almost see just a hint of chocolate in there. Okay, it's hard to see. These guys are young. They've got that... They've got that. Uh, they've got that wild punk rock, uh, <laughs> punky hairdo going on. Trust me, they're going to blow this out, and it's going to be just as gorgeous as any other chrome mini rex bunny. But when they're just when they're when they're little and they're just growing their fur in, they're more interested in growing it in quickly. Okay, at first, and then they'll blow it out and grow in pretty hair later. Right now, they're just worried about getting some grown in so they can stay warm. Okay, so chocolate becomes lilac. Okay, well, if we have a black, well, if we have a black, come here, little buddy. Yep, it's your turn again. It's your, it's your turn. Okay, here we have a black. Now, if you hit this black with the dilution gene, it's just like put take. It's just like if you had a black rabbit and you took and dropped a, dropped a little bit of bleach on that rabbit and washed a little bit of the color out. That's what the dilution does. You're diluting the color with the dilution gene. And the black rabbit, when you hit it with the dilution gene, or actually, again, it's recessive, so it takes both copies. Both copies to make the dilution go into effect. Okay? So black becomes blue. So you got black is blue, chocolate is lilac. These are the basic four colors that you would find on an AA or self-colored rabbit. Okay? Now, of all of these colors, any one of them can be also affected by the tan or the otter gene, which we mentioned in a previous video. And any one of these guys could have the otter pattern. As you see, they've all got their bellies and everything. They're all the same color as the rest of them. It just so happens that Twix had this litter of babies, and she had just the colors I needed to use in one litter, all the same age. And so I just went through there and picked out what I needed for this video. And these guys are just great, doing just a great job helping me out here. Uh, again, they're only about probably two and a half, maybe three weeks old. I can look it up, but it's not that important. They're somewhere in that neighborhood. That's the dilution gene in a nutshell. And of course, I showed you, you know, or I told you about uh, chocolate and black. There you go. Either one of these, both of these rabbits right here, have the dominant black gene on the bee locust. If this rabbit didn't have two lowercase or dilute genes, two copies of that that makes it a blue, it would be a black just like this. Genetically, it, in every way except for the color here, you know, it's just it's just that color is diluted just down just a little bit. In fact, if you look, you can really see how similar these colors are. One's just a little bit lighter than the other. It's a little bit of color washed out. So there's black and blue, and again, you know, like I said, if you look up real close, and I don't know how well the camera picks this stuff up, and I don't have the best lighting in here anyway. I need to improve on that, but, you know, uh, I've got 100,000 other things to do as well, so I don't know how soon that'll get taken care of, but I hope you guys will just bear with me. But if you look, just the same way, you look here at your bird, you look down in there, see how you almost have a lilac-looking color down in that chocolate? or a dove gray color down close to the down close to the skin well don't you see something similar over here on this lilac okay this right here is always on the chocolate because it's down close to the skin and it's kind of an under, the undercoat on the lilac the undercoat color kind of it kind of becomes top coat color okay so that's explaining the dilution gene Go watch for our next video. We're going to explain the broken gene and how it works and how it affects how it affects the rabbit. But for now, we're going to stop here. We thank y'all for watching. 
Hope this helps y'all. If you have any questions, send me instant messages or, or something, and I'll try to and I'll try to explain further if needed. But in the meantime, y'all have a great day. And God bless.